I think there's two areas of issue here. One is the nutritional content of the food as opposed to non-organic food and the other area is whether it has greater health benefits which may or may not be to do with the nutritional levels. So for example if you grow a food that's organic in a soil that's depleted of nutrients you're going to get an inferior product. So it actually comes down to what is in the soil. On the other hand or the other part of the equation, what we're looking at with organic foods is what isn't in them. And I think of greater importance today is the level of chemicals that we find in non-organically produced. Absolutely not. I mean, all my patients have to go organic if they're going to cure themselves of chronic degenerative disease. If they're going to still consume food that has made them sick in the first place, then they're not going to get better. Now here you would argue, or a medical person would argue and say, well, the diet has absolutely nothing to do with health. I know in my practice that when patients do change their diet, then we see significant improvements in health. And I say, let the clinical evidence speak for itself. Well, if a, if a person comes and we look at the case history and we have a whole list of symptoms that are presenting, and then when they go on a program where you're eating, uh, well, it, it's a, a fairly um, structured diet, but predominantly, particularly if patients are on the Gerson therapy, it's probably 80% vegetables. We can see a reversal of most of those symptoms within a very short period of time. So supposing someone comes and they've got a chronic condition that they've been treated medically with, by drugs, say they've got chronic ulcerative colitis, we um, then start to see a healing or a reduction of the symptoms. And what's important is that after a period of time when they haven't had any symptoms, we can start reintroducing foods that they were, um, that could be associated with um, exacerbating the condition, but because the body has healed, they are then able to take in I think that there is enormous clarity and what that report was saying to parents is that there are certain windows in a child's um, growth and development where these chemicals have m maximum impact. That's when they're in the uterus, when they're very, very tiny during the childhood and then particularly just coming into puberty. That's when the child is growing, um, having massive growth development and it's at those times that at the processes that govern the nervous system and the development of the sexual reproductive organs can be disrupted and the, it's almost like the programming can be disrupted. Organic food's going to have a lot higher level of antioxidants in it like beta carotene. Um, a lot of food that's non-organic that's uh, been subject to certain fertilizers they are known to bind things like magnesium in the soil to make it unavailable. So generally, organic produce and vegetables are going to have higher levels of magnesium in them and a better potassium-sodium ratio. Um, these minerals, all of them, are absolutely critical for the growth and functioning of um, the, the baby and the child. So if there's a magnesium deficiency, for example, that can lead to calcium deficiencies. It can lead to problems in nerve conduction. It can lead to problems in energy production. Um, and then from there, you've got a whole raft of health problems. I think the, the problem is, is that we have to do something. And when people ask, well, if just by doing that, is it going to change? Uh, when we consider that it's in the atmosphere we breathe, it's in all the water we drink. <coughs> um, it's, it's the one area where a human being does have control over. You know, our governments and our institutions are not protecting us. And yet, you know, we are expected to vote. A beautiful thing that a, a person said to me recently, she said she didn't have any confidence in the government, so she elected not to vote. She didn't live in Australia, but she said, I vote. I, every day I make my vote by buying organic. 
And I think as consumers, this is the area where we can exert the most control and we have to start somewhere. Because I can't say if you switch to organic, you're going to make a massive impact, but you are going to, to protect, you are making a stand and you're going forward to protect the next generation and your children, they're going to have a much better um, outcome, health outcome, if you feed them organic. I mean, it's um, when, when we look at, we get so hung up on looking at disease and we never look at the health of the individual. And you can get two patients, say, with the same disease, they go into hospital and they have the same treatment. One patient will be fixed in a week and the other patient won't respond. It's not the treatment that's made the difference, it's the patient's capacity to respond to the treatment. It's the inherent vitality and the inherent stamina. And quite simply, if we continue eating food that's deficient, we won't have an inherent stamina and we won't be able to resist disease. The other aspect, which is if we eat food that's additionally contaminated, that is known to produce, cancer and other dreadful diseases, then we are we're really increasing our odds of getting cancer. So I think that's probably my fundamental message.